so much for tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week. Drop a comment on this video and give the video a share if you want to support my DIY channel. And if you're interested in advertising on my YouTube channel, feel free to email me at lastrockerstv at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Last Rockers TV, the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. And I'm here with Neville and Sugary Staple at Rebellion Festival. Original rude boy, Neville Staple. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Sugary yes. Staple. <laughs> yes, you guys were amazing tonight. The floor was literally bouncing. Everyone uh, was dancing so hard. It was incredible. No, we we enjoyed it so much. We always enjoy playing at Rebellion. Plus, once we know, like I said, the floor is bouncing, it's better. <laughs> we love it. Yeah, yeah, we bounce with them. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about um, how the two of you started playing music together? Oh. Yeah, I think like... Sugar, we better um, tell you about that. So, so Neville's obviously been doing this for years. I had um, a punky band in London. I also was doing other stuff in London, mostly acting, theatre and film. And then Neville was doing a 2009 reunion tour with the specials. With the specials, yeah. He'd already been all over LA, he was living there, he was doing stuff all across the world globally. And then the specials reunion, they all got together and I met him. He came to my town in Hackney in London and he fell in love with me, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I did, I did. And uh, I tried to be naughty and I was told off. Yeah. I told him, um, no, he I'm pretended. not just like that. Yeah, he pretended there was a party and there was no party. I went to this party that didn't exist and then he said, my hotel room's here, come and stay boy. with me. And I just ran off into that because I'm not that kind of girl. No, <laughs> I, no, I was a rude boy. I was a rude boy. Yeah, yeah, and I was a rude girl. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> good for you, keep those standards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that was it. We got together and the rest is history. I managed the band, I performed with the band. And you were married. And we're we're married. married. Yeah. I, w I was thinking that watching the two of you perform that it's obviously when you have long relationships what keeps the spice alive and I would imagine like when you work with your partner that's something that just adds a little extra to the mix or can add some tension <laughs> yeah but no um, a lot of people ask the same thing what's it like working with your wife um, do you argue do you get on we get on great if you see us on stage you could tell that chemistry between both of us um what do you think Chibi? yeah no i agree because we're we're also best friends yeah so we you literally share everything we do everything together well most things <laughs> <laughs> but we still can maintain our individuality which yeah. is important as well so yeah yeah we just get on great we support each other in all what we do if i'm songwriting if he's songwriting if we're recording stuff, don't, if we're don't, performing. Don't, don't remember, you do a little bit of filming. She does a little bit of filming as well. Yeah, yeah. do a lot of uh, film productions. I also run a couple of festivals of my own as well. So I keep my stuff going as well as Neville keeping his stuff going. And we support each other, which that's is amazing. important. Yeah. I think that's important, like especially you know, working in entertainment, it's if your partner doesn't work in entertainment, that can cause some friction sometimes too because they don't quite understand. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's true. And. Um, because we understand each other, um, Sugary performs and I perform. So because we've got that connection, and we do, it's not like, oh, you do that, you do that. Yeah. We just get on great. And a yeah. lot of it we do together. And yeah. we love doing it together. Yeah. So yeah. it's great as well. I think that's apparent. You guys yeah. have really good chemistry on stage. Thank you. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta. And you can see we enjoy being on stage together and with the band. The band are brilliant. Oh, Our band are just brilliant. Awesome. They're brilliant guys, they're yeah. brilliant. 
fantastic guys. Yeah. Absolutely love them. Yeah, they and I saw you with chemistry with your camera. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, for You were right there yeah. in the moment, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes too, it's like I get the shot I need and then I it's the best seat in the house. So I'll just put the camera down and just watch yeah, the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was looking at that. I said, that, that's such a lovely different hairstyle. I yeah, I love no, it. No, you look, because it's, um, it's attractive. It's striking. And it's striking. Thank you. So I was on stage with her. Yeah. If you see me, I went over, uh, over to uh, Sugary. That's what I, I mentioned as well. So, uh, she looks good. Yeah, you do. Lovely you hairstyle. Great. You yeah. great. Love it. Dave, come on. Hey. Stop messing around. Then think your future. Hard time train right now. Pretty long, time. Can you guys talk about, um, you know, obviously with the specials being, you know, changing the, the music scene with ska and two tone, but then can you talk about how that has kind of intertwined with punk? Like obviously here at Rebellion Punk Music Festival, you see all the punks with their spiky hair and they're all dancing to the point where the floors are bouncing. And can you talk about how, you know, these musical genres have kind of melted together for you and when you're making your music, how, how you bring it together? And well. Well, um, the energy that the specials had was a mixture of punk, ska, and um, blue beat. So the energy that we got, or because we've done, um, we supported the Clash. So the energy we got makes it from the Clash, and we just it just seemed to blend in. It seemed to blend in, and it does. It works. It works really well because ska, even the traditional ska from Jamaica, mm. was upbeat. You couldn't help but dance, dance swing definitely. your arms and bounce around to it. So infusing that scar with the British punk, mm -hmm. it's just, you, you, how can you not love that? You know, everyone's going to jump around and enjoy themselves because it's got that upbeat flavour. Yeah. Plus of all, it's got that energy and mixing the energy with the scar. It, it was just something different. If, mm -hmm. At the time, when you, hit, when you heard it, it was like, how can that mix with that? But then when you're in the, the energy on stage, mixing, like Sugary said, the ska and the punk, because I used to love punk. Yeah. And oh, then me we, too. I was a punk before yeah. I was a rude girl. And when we supported the, 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 uh, the Clash, because they were, had that energy as well. So mm -hmm. when we played with them, the energy mixing with our music, that, that was kind of great a lot of people just think oh that's weird yeah but they used to bounce around and dance to it a lot of the like the 90s punk bands that were bringing in that that ska influence Absolutely. and like even even yeah. today you know you have bands like the interrupters which you know tim armstrong yeah. produced and it's it's just heavily <laughs> but talking about tim armstrong we, um we've done something with tim armstrong what was that I can't remember yeah the and song. you were to, you were in the in la and stuff when no Long doubt Beach. was starting out yeah. Yeah. Um, bands like that because they some of them supported you you've got them kind of yeah. on the road actually say Ferris the lovely so, money yeah definitely um, yeah. and they used, all had that punk flavour didn't yeah, they because yeah. you used to say how it's the punk the, scar the scar yeah, yeah, over it's there different. had that yes it was more it was different you know, he loved it, it. Is, it, it was even more faster than I read yeah yeah so I got used to that as well because um, I had to 
they played it and I said, you can go a bit faster, but they were doing it fast anyway. Yeah. So that was, that, that, that was brilliant. But I, um, I'd done the Vans tour, Coachella. Oh, that's so many I'd done because in LA they've got so many different, um, so many different gigs. Yeah. Mine had done so many in LA. I can't, just can't even think. I've done some shows. Got to go back. It's time to go back. <laughs> Can you talk about um, you know last year Terry Hall's passing? Were you close with him at the time that he passed? I mean, obviously you guys started the specials together, and you did um, your other band after the specials with him. Fun Boy Three. Yes. Yeah, Fun Boy Three. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did get on in the specials, and was it wasn't close, close friends, mm -hmm. but I did feel it when he died. But in the fun in the spe in the um, Fun Boy Three. I, it was more with me and Linval, but with the specials, there's so many of us. You got on with two, three, four, but like with the um, Fun Boy Three, there's just three of us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, said you, you know, had a lot it's more easier. Fun, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like all the jokes about ska bands and like how many freaking ska members do you need to screw in a light bulb? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it, it did hit Neville. We was on holiday at the time, and it did hit. You know, if you lose, they they made history together. Yeah. So you know, and um, even now, a lot of the shows we're doing, Neville's honouring Terry's memory. Yeah. And others like Brad and Rico, and you know, other past Rankin members Roger. of Two Tone, Rankin Roger, mm -hmm. and um, he honours them. We mention them at most of our shows and stuff, and we we keep the music going. And yeah. Yeah. And Fun Boy Free's just re there's been a new release of stuff for that. There's special new releases That's amazing. so we support it all plus as well you got to remember I've done so many shows mm -hmm. yeah it's it's unbelievable and I still love it and I still want to do more and never when you're gonna retire and I says what's retire what do you mean yeah. <laughs> I looked over towards the end of your set tonight and there was a woman in the front row and she was just crying and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> because, it, because she was, it was like happy tears. Like she was like, I don't know what yeah. her story was. Maybe it was that she was finally getting to see these songs perform live. Maybe but, she'd never seen you. Maybe she just is a super fan, but it was just. Yeah, we never know. Cause even when they see us for the first time and they see the energy. And so the energy that they're seeing that we've got, it, goes into them and I think it's the nostalgia it. as well oh, yes. I really do it mm. just brings back a flood of memories of that time where was you when you were first listening to the music uh, and the, it all resonates still today yeah. doesn't it and the worst one not the worst one it's funny when you hear them say when I was a kid <laughs> I used to listen to, but I'm thinking okay well, was that too long ago never was it <laughs> <laughs> so you know you, you you get a lot of that yeah um I've been listening to the specials from when I was a babe, not baby, <laughs> but from a kid. It's just weird because, and then you see them and say, oh, oh, how old must I have been then? Yeah. 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 There's a lot of young fans now, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, there a were. Lot of followers who mm. are really young. And yeah, because it's they, to see. the generations below, they bring their, they bring their children. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And like I said, the music is so upbeat and infectious and the sing-alongs are brilliant. Oh, I love it when and they the sing along. And the lyrics, yeah. even today, the lyrics still mean something yeah, to yeah, them. Definitely. You know, you can still relate today. Yeah, love definitely. it. Yeah. yeah. So can we, lastly, we'll close out with this, can we talk more about uh, the new releases that you have coming out? Oh, Fun Boy 3, uh, we release uh, Sugary. Yeah, there's a Sugary EP that's um, coming out in September. Okay. And that's got stuff where I've, so what's happened is, um, we big up Neville, he's the star, he's the legend, he's the two-tone king. Um, and Fonboy 3. And Fonboy 3 king. <laughs> 
And um, but I and I do a lot of stuff. I perform with him. I manage the band. I manage him. All his career, everything. Um, but sometimes I've done writing and stuff, and it stays in the shadows. So he said, just put your own stuff out. So yeah, uh, this is my own writing. Uh, yeah. Some some collaborations, but it's a little EP that I'm putting out. The last one, which was Rude Girl Sounds, sold out everywhere. Mm. So we're putting that out. Okay. And then on top of that, we've got um, Fun Boy 3. Yeah. Exclusive Maybe color. you can... Uh, should we can tell you about the uh, release of Fun Boy 3? Because like I said, um, I've done so many things in this release. And when I listen back to the, uh, the, the re-release... Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> so, Sugary, you yeah, can... there's a lot of stuff that was never released. So, there's yeah. a box set for Fun Boy 3, and it's got loads of stuff and alternative versions, and there's some colour vinyl of all the albums that mm -hmm. they put out. Um, and a lot of people think Fun Boy 3 was just this fun thing. Mm. There's some really hard-hitting mm. No, songs some of them thought there, it was all moody. Um, yeah. It said Fun Boy 3 because it was a little take on it. And you were having it a lot of like... fun, weren't you? <laughs> It was like having fun like that. Mm -hmm. It was just a take in it. I should have said it was like, if you notice some of our, our songs on Fun Boy 3, yeah. it was just... Um, but some were hard hitting. Hard they? hitting. Yeah. Lunatics. That was when... Uh, yeah. That's about Reagan and about Margaret Thatcher and about what was happening and at the time. And war and all that. Yeah, yeah. Still definitely. resonates today. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it. Yeah, so, it you know, all of that. And like I said, um, the re-release and stuff, um, some of them I didn't even know about because it's, it, it's material that wasn't even put out. Mm -hmm. It was like demos. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear that. I know that you guys do have a bus to catch. So yeah, we do. Yeah, we have. I'm going to close. I, coming. I don't want to <laughs> take up too much more of your time, so I'll close with that and say thank you guys so much for giving me a piece of your time tonight. It was, uh, it was no, an honor. No thank you, Aaron. Thank Lovely you. to meet Thanks you. very much, yeah. This is the original Rule Boy Never Staple from the specials. And I'm Sugary Staple, and you're listening to Last Rockers TV. Last Rockers TV. Remember that. Watch it. Rude Boy tell you that.